onboarding. That's mm -hmm. a critical objective. Um, what's your target developer? Do you have any specific requirements? Uh, are there specific open source projects you're leaning towards? Um, speak to the developer community out there and tell us what you're yeah, well, the developers for. community, I mean, we, they know that we, we're, we're heavy on Eclipse as, a, as an ID. Uh, we're, we're using open source, uh, all, all the different aspects from the application server, the web servers, I mean, the, the Apache, the Tomcat. Uh, we, are, we are big on Java. Uh, I've heard sometimes the question, ABBA versus Java. No, it's going to be both, and, and we're big on Java. Um, personally, again, I'm, I'm using any, any, any which way I can, uh, open source, and I want to able I want to enable them to develop quickly those applications that I cannot, and I will be not. A, I won't be able to develop. There's myself. a starving community out there of entrepreneurs out there who yeah. are yeah. really got what their it? tools out. They know yeah. the market's on the upswing. Yeah. They see an SAP kind of moving and shifting and saying, "Come on, there's a lot of white space. Pick some white space." So I want to offer them a secure environment. For, again, from an enterprise standpoint, a secure environment where. I want to offer them a performing environment, so real time with the capacity. I want to offer them an environment where they, they can onboard quickly, they can de develop quickly, distribution. and then distribution, and then they can, and where the, all the services needed to develop an, ex an exciting mobile experience will be there. So that's those are the goals of this business web project. So you, I think you, you, you just talked about it, but I want to put it into the context of some of the alternatives that developers have. Mm -hmm. So. And really the question gets down to how does SAP differentiate and appeal to those de developers relative to some, some of your big competition. So you've, you've got Oracle, I mean Oracle's doing stuff in memory and flash and mm. you know, big data. You've got IBM doing you know, its thing with, with uh, the smarter planet and also doing a lot of in-memory stuff. Um, you've got SaaS doing some things with mobile. You've got Microsoft everywhere. So how do you cut through all that noise and, and appeal to developers? What's the key message to them and how is SAP different? SAP is different, I would say, because we are connected with the back end. We understand better than anybody else, and we have access to the back end better than anybody can. Uh, when Hassel this morning talked about, there was a question, I think it was question 9 or 10, saying, how different is HANA? And he, he had a slide, I said, he gave 10, 10 points. It's not about the in-memory storage, uh, but it's also about the column storage, and it's about the partitioning, and it's about the multi-threading, and it's about the way you use aggregated information inside so the unique comes from the assembly of those elements which individually are not unique but when you assemble them and you add the access to the back end and you add access to the understanding of the sap system as it is today then that gives you the unique things when apple came with the ipod what was unique there i mean you could say the hardware yeah. was there and the, yeah but the combination of the software called itune and the hardware that makes it different yeah. and i think we're, we're shooting for the same same and how disruptive it's been since then. I mean, that's why I'm so excited about your plan right now because I think the sky's the limit. I and mean, we were just speculating that mm. with SAP's platform, you could make a run at Microsoft's Office franchise within the enterprise. Who mm. just offer have a developer fill a white space called business software, beat out Google Docs. I mean, Google Docs is kind of clumsy. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't it be nice to have some new software? Yeah. Let's. Again, this is, we're talking about research here, so this, <laughs> this is definitely the vision and the intention. But the, again, this it support the on-demand uh, approach, it support the mobile approach that Jim and and uh, and Bill have highlighted. And Vishal the innovation cycle is another message that um, Sh when Schnappe was here with <laughs> us sitting down inside the cube, um, he was talking about the innovation cycle, and obviously mobility is a big part of that. And with cloud, what's your view on the this this uh, innovation cycle that we're living in right now? It's, it definitely. It seems like it's accelerating. At least I can I can testify from the inside that it is definitely accelerating within SAP. Again, part of the and Jim, Bill, Vishal, I and mean, everybody is is pushing towards those, those faster innovation cycle, and and the company is responding to that. So that's great. Um, now we, we still can do better than that, and that's why we are working again with, within our teams and within our uh, the rest of the company in terms of uh, processes, in terms of. Um, enablement in terms of mindset and attitude. Yeah. Explain to the folks out there who are watching, we have a few hundred people now hanging around still, still great audience. You're an experienced uh, entrepreneur executive now at SAP. You've been involved in a lot of the, the Silicon Valley and tech world. Um, what's your view of the current landscape of the marketplace right now? Um, obviously, it's a crazy hyped up, but really rapidly changing market. Um, so for entrepreneurs and for businesses, what's how do you view the external market outside of SAP right now? I think we're, we're again, one uh, at this time in this, where there, there are excitement and there are excitement on, on a couple of very identified buzzwords on environment, like we had in 95 and 95 and 2000 with the internet. Now we have it with cloud and mobile. 
And, and so that gives, again, the opportunity for great entrepreneurship and great ideas and great tentatives. And some of them will fall flat on their faces. Well, so be it. But I think this is the time where we are because they, we are yeah. seeing disruptive technology. Most of business objects emerge out of, out of that entrepreneurship uh, movement. Very yeah. successful. Yeah. There, there are those coming and those new companies, right? Yeah. Well, and, and how was it? I, I wanted to ask you, Hervé Couturier, when you came over from business objects, you had to be a little bit nervous coming into this company that had a you know, reputation for complexity and maybe even a little bit not invented here. Um, were you nervous coming in and, and, and were you, you know, pleasantly surprised? Or what surprised you? No, there's, there was, positive, was very positive surprise because the, the quality of the people definitely is, is superb. Uh, the, the, the notion of, of they are friendly, they are very professional, very efficient, getting the job done. That was very, very... Um, dressed very nicely. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I that. Yeah. Well, that's, that's part of the cultural change. Uh -huh. Yes, it's, uh, uh -huh. it's more... Um, Ties and, and, and suit than uh, I'm an East Coast guy, so I like that. Uh, yeah. John, maybe not so much. I was wearing a tie for a while, and all the, the listeners are like, hey, we, John, lose the tie, we don't believe you. Come on. Yeah. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I lost okay, the tie. Yes, you know, there it down. is. You know. Yeah. They said, put that button back up again. Okay. Um, no, so so we're, we're able to influence the company on, again, the, the user experience, the, the fun, the cool, the good looking. It's good to be good looking. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have to be boring to be serious. It could be serious and good looking at the same time. And, and I think we. We also learned about the, the, the processes and, and what it takes to run a 50,000 people company versus a 7,000 people company. So We've got a question on the, uh, the chat here. We always get some people chiming in. What about the new developments at SaaS in the analytics mobile sector? How do you think they will compete with SAP? SaaS, you mean SaaS, uh, SAS, SAS, the, SAS, the, the SAS. predictive company. Yeah. yeah. Uh, are, are, we committing, are we committing with SaaS? I don't know. I mean, we're, we're not in this very sophisticated, advanced, PhD-oriented, geeky, uh, complex predictive model. And predictive is, uh, how much prediction can you get? I mean, this is the, if you read the chaos theory, there's so much you can predict. Uh, a, a, a butterfly wings in, in Paris and you have a, uh, an earthquake in South Africa or something like this. So what we need, what we're working on is more on the um, aggregation of data upfront. And so if I can predict the weather two days, from, two days from now, if I can understand what are my ice creams cabinet and where they're loaded, what do they own, what do they have in it? Do I have my ice cream or do I have fish from a competitor? This is a real case. Yeah. If I can understand what's the Berlin Marathon route will be and how whether the tourist pattern, and if I understand what my ice cream supply chain is, my inventory, then I can, I can decide, I can predict how much chocolate ice cream do I need to put in my ice cream cabinet to serve better the marathon, or to take the opportunity of the marathon in Berlin. That's yeah. a real life example. Yeah. But the prediction model is between temperature and ice cream is pretty simple. The question is assembling the weather, the weather information, the marathon route information, the supply chain information, and the ice cream cabinet content information, which, which requires a lot of tracking from the get-go, from three weeks ago, to get to that done. So that's mashup. more where we... It's a data mashup. It's, yeah, it's context awareness. But it's, it's a back end that, again, is your real core competency, right? I mean, that, would, that wouldn't be the back end. That would be able to create sense out of... And out of and combining weather sure. information, well, this right. is the back end, well, and delivering that and delivering that on on the mobile phone because the, the the truck guy will have to know. Okay, I want to deliver five crate of chocolate ice cream to that ice cream cabinet on Potsdam yeah. and and Unter den Linden. Yeah, I mean we're we're experiencing that too in our business. We're the, we're in a new media business. We're a clean sheet of paper. We're doing things new, as you know, we're doing broadcasting these events, in depth coverage. So it's kind of like a new model. Except we don't have. It's not like cable TV in America. It's like the internet. It's yeah. global, right? So we have a lot, huge reaction. Um, just an advice question: How should we be using big data? I mean, because we're building our backends now as we speak. Um, mm. To use gesture data, Twitter data, because you know we've been. You can predict things. So that you can get a lot of real-time information. Obviously, we are real-time with our publishing and our broadcasting. Any advice for us? Heterogeneity. I mean, if it's it's not a, it's no longer about one sort of information. It is about merging and giving sense. That that's the issue. It's how can I create sense between something coming out of Twitter, something coming out of Facebook, something coming out of my ERP data? What's the common aggregation? What's the metadata out of that? And that's signal from the noise. Yeah, the signal, the signal from the noise, and even signals from noises. Well, we had a great so, conversation with Schnabe last night. He <laughs> wants to know more about our, our uh, 
a secret project that we're running called Fish Finder because he had fish up on his keynote. I don't know if you saw that. Mm -hmm. yeah, he had the little fish theory in which we've been schools, schools of yeah, fish and you know patterns. And John practically jumped out of his seat when he saw that. <laughs> he said, I got to talk to Schnabel yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah, no, he's but, smart. I love it. You so know, good. If we think prediction from IDC is by 2020 there will be 50 billion of connected devices stuff like your refrigerator your car your wrist your watch everything how and every each one of them will send one piece of information yes i'm working no i'm not working i feel good no i don't feel good you we need something to manage that yeah. and so it's going to be all about heterogeneity data and business intelligence my, my final question um, is uh, and we're, we're watching siliconangle.tv live at sapphire we have the leading worldwide leading in tech coverage the cube is our flagship product where we go on the ground with our anchor desk go talk to the smartest minds extract the data the metadata and share that knowledge with the world so you guys can enjoy it um, we are here with a very seasoned executive on the product side and my final question is um, for the folks out there that are watching and or will write about this on the blogs What's your advice to them as entrepreneurs? Because we get a lot of entrepreneurs out there who watch uh, kind of our, our content and our analysis, who want to read the tea leaves. Share with them your experience and advice in the current marketplace now, not so much from an SAP perspective. Yeah, share that too, you know, come develop on SAP, obviously, but as entrepreneurs, what advice would you give them in today's market? How to build product, what to do, and looking for some guidance, be, be a mentor. Yeah, I mean, cloud, mobile, um, on demand, you can't be wrong. Then get a customer. Don't lose reality. Don't lose contact with reality. Because that, again, you don't want to get again into the internet bubble of 2001, 2002. Uh, so it's all about making money. So getting a customer that will validate the idea, that will validate the prototype is fundamental. Real value. Yeah, Great. Right. Yeah, yeah, real, real value, value versus hype, yes. Uh, Hervé Couturier, thank you very much for coming on theCUBE. Great guest. Everybody. It was wonderful to have you. Yeah, Great. Wonderful. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. Champagne for Appreciate you today. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for your time.